Good afternoon. It's Wednesday the 21st of October and we're delighted to welcome you to this special broadcast from the National Apprentice Service. I'm Martin Birchall from High Flyers Research. And I'm Shanice Evans from the BBC. We're live in London and we'll be your host today for the launch of the Top 100 Apprenticeship Employers for 2020. Now, by way of a brief introduction, I'm the Research Director for the new Top 100 rankings. And I'm a journalist and presenter who joined the BBC as, a as an apprentice four years ago. And between us, we'll be counting down the country's top apprenticeship employers. Along the way, I'll be speaking to the Minister for Apprenticeships and Skills and the Director of Apprenticeships at the Education and Skills Funding Agency. And I've caught up with some apprentices who are working on some of the nation's top apprenticeship programmes. And we'll be talking to several of this year's top 100 employers. Now, it's a busy programme, so we'll be with you for around about the next 90 minutes, but don't worry, we've divided it into two parts and there'll be a short break halfway through. Now, wherever you're watching today's broadcast from, whether you're one of hundreds of employers around the country who've entered for this year's top 100, or you're an apprentice already working hard on your apprenticeship, or you're a teacher or a careers advisor, or you're a student at school or college thinking about your future career options. You're all very welcome. We're really glad you've been able to join us. Let's start by explaining how the Top 100 Apprenticeship Employers has been compiled. The new rankings are based on the latest data about England's Apprenticeship Employers, so there's no voting and there's no judging process to determine the results. Entries opened in mid-March this year, so we're really grateful to all the employers who worked hard for the worst of the coronavirus lockdown and compiled their information to submit their entries. Entries were open to employers with a minimum of 250 employees and 25 apprentices. Each employer provided four key pieces of data. The total number of apprentices employed by their organisation in March of this year. The number of apprentices who started an apprenticeship during the year from the 1st of April 2019 until the 31st of March 2020. The diversity of these new apprentices. And finally, the number of apprentices that successfully completed their apprenticeships during the year and went on to further employment with the employer. Now, the first of these factors, the number of apprentices employed and the number of apprenticeship starts were weighted according to the size of the employer's workforce. All four pieces of data were independently verified and scored, and from this the final rankings were confirmed. So, the new Top 100 Apprenticeship Employers is a real celebration of the real commitment to this country's leading employers that have made their employing apprentices in 2020. We're not quite ready to begin revealing the results yet, because earlier this week I caught up with the Minister responsible for apprenticeships to talk to her about the new rankings. Gillian Keegan, Minister for Apprenticeships and Skills, thank you very much for joining us today for uh, the launch of the Top 100 Apprenticeship Employers for 2020. Thank you, I'm delighted to be here. Well, uh, Minister, over 400 employers uh, submitted entries for the new rankings this year, and together they employ over 125,000 apprentices. So you must be really pleased with the level of interest in the new Top 100. I am, and it shows just how committed uh, many, many companies are to uh, high quality apprenticeships and wanting to showcase all the work they're doing in this space. And particularly during this challenging time, it's really encouraging to see um, employers continue to invest in apprenticeships, um, recognising the value of apprenticeships and also the top 100 um, apprenticeship employee rankings obviously give that recognition and we seek to give that recognition and that sort of prestige uh, to apprenticeships and high quality apprenticeships. So yeah, I'm absolutely delighted with the take up. Now, you and I both uh, uh, grew up in, the, in Liverpool in the 1980s. Um, and I remember very clearly just how tough it was for young people to find their way into their first job. You left school and went into an apprenticeship yourself. What, what difference did that make to uh, the, the career that you've enjoyed since? Well, it, it, I mean, as you say, the 1980s, I left school in 1984. Um, I think there was about three million unemployed. Youth employment was about 20 percent. Um, and it was very, very challenging times. Um, and it didn't just make a massive difference to my career. It actually made a massive difference to my life. It completely changed my life. And many, uh, many of my, my friends in school, you know, didn't get the opportunity of um, an apprenticeship. Um, but the apprenticeship I went on, I will always be very thankful to General Motors, who, uh, who basically gave me that chance. And it was a three year rotational apprenticeship. And it was uh, it gave me such a solid foundation, actually, for my career in life. It put me in a position where I could take management opportunities a lot earlier than most people. I sponsored, I was sponsored to, to do a degree in parallel as well. So I ended up pretty much, um, 
you know, with a degree, um, but with a lot of work experience by the time everybody else came out of uh, university, if they'd chosen to do that. So it was a life changing experience. And I think one that ha still uh, makes a difference to me to this day in how I approach things. And of course, um, that that model of apprenticeships, that was probably the, the forerunner of today's degree apprenticeships. Yeah, it was. Um, and, you know, people find it quite surprising when I say, you know, these are actually, um, you know, in some way, shape or form, uh, some of these uh, apprenticeships have been going for many years. The problem with them was they were not very widely available. I was the only one I, I knew in my uh, year group who, who got one of these uh, apprenticeships. So, you know, and there were five places uh, in, in, a, in a car factory. Um, so there wasn't that many. I think what, what really has happened now is, first of all, the the, the, the breadth and the, and, the, and the spread of apprenticeships into many different sectors um, and many different companies. And actually, the, the number of standards now, I think we've got about 580 apprenticeship standards, all with different careers into areas that, you know, are, are very broad. Sometimes I think people pigeonhole apprenticeships to what they used to be, which is, you know, maybe more in the manufacturing industry or construction, whereas now pretty, pretty much any career path you can start and um, get a long way um, uh, through an apprenticeship. Well, we certainly have a whole host of different industries and business sectors represented within the new top 100. So we'll be looking forward to that countdown a little bit later. Um, I was just going to ask, though, um, all of the uh, the rankings that we're celebrating today uh, refer to employers' uh, apprenticeship recruitment and their achievements with their programmes before the onset of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, how much support is in place to help those same employers um, through the current crisis and beyond with their apprenticeship programmes? Well, there's no doubt that coronavirus has had a huge impact on um, many businesses up and down uh, the country. Actually, some of them um, have almost been closed overnight and others uh, are, are really, really busy, uh, you know, and obviously it's not equally applied. Um, but we have um, supported employers um, to recruit apprentices, um, so to, to continue uh, recruiting apprentices. Um, and we've got schemes in place where we incentivize with payments of £2,000 or £1,500 if it's an older apprentice. Uh, and that's in place till the end of January. We've also set up the redundancy support service for apprenticeships, which tries to match uh, apprentices who um, unfortunately are made redundant with a new employer and over 600 employers have signed up to that and we've also um, committed ourselves that for those uh, apprentices who are made redundant if they have less than six months or are more than three quarters of the way through their apprenticeship then we will um, invest in them to, to finish their training so they become uh, fully fully qualified and they can look for roles as a, as, as, as a, a fully qualified uh, apprentice so you know we have have, we have tried to be there to, 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 to support businesses, but we understand, you know, this uncertainty, it's incredibly difficult decision. So we're really thankful that actually many employers have continued to employ their apprentices. They've continued to take on new apprentices, even with this uncertainty. And I guess that's probably because, I mean, as a, as a business exec myself for 30 years, I can honestly say I never regretted hiring an apprentice. And if you've had that experience, you understand what, what a massive contribution an apprentice makes to your business, how that knowledge transfer is really vital and, and really adds a lot to, to many people in the organisation. And I think once you've gone down that route, you recognise the massive value that apprentices bring to businesses. So uh, hopefully that will encourage people to continue to take more on. Well, that's a very positive note to end on. Gillian Keegan, Minister for Apprenticeships and Skills, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Now, we're ready to make a start on our new Top 100 uh, countdown and the new rankings. Um, so I'd be very grateful if you could get things rolling for us. Well, um, congratulations. Thank you all for uh, submitting your entry. We're overwhelmed um, that you have done that and so many of you have taken the time to do that. Um, you have been rightly recognised with a place in the top 100 apprenticeship employer rankings for 2020. Uh, good luck and congratulations to all. We start the countdown at number 100 with Princess Yachts, the British luxury motor yacht manufacturer based in Plymouth in Devon. One in 20 of its 3,000 strong workforce are craft, business or technology apprenticeships. 
At number 99, it's Babcock International, the first of six major engineering and industrial employers in this year's Top 100. Last year, more than 390 apprentices began apprenticeships at the company, which delivers complex engineering services for the defence, emergency services and nuclear sectors. We head to the northwest of England for number 98 and the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority. Its Metro Mayor, Steve Rotherham, is a former apprentice himself, and as well as championing apprenticeship opportunities across the region, the Authority offers its own programmes from Level 2 to Level 7. From highways to residential development, Scanscare is one of the UK's leading contractors constructing, upgrading and maintaining the country's building and infrastructure. It's at number 97 in the new Top 100, with apprenticeship programmes at Level 2 and Level 3 in engineering, operations and business support. At number 96, with brands like More Than and Motability, RSA is one of the world's longest standing insurance companies. Its 300 apprentices are working as insurance underwriters, claims handlers, software testers and data analysts. Voyage Care is at 95. It's one of 10 employers from the health and social care sector in the top 100. It provides specialist support for over 3,500 people with learning disabilities and complex needs and offers up to 300 apprenticeships each year. At number 94, we're back in the northwest of England for Salford City Council. It's a keen advocate for apprenticeships in its area and employs more than 200 of its own apprentices across the council. One place ahead, Keir Group is a major UK construction and infrastructure services company with more than 40 offices in different parts of England and 25 individual apprenticeship programmes from entry level to degree and master level apprenticeships. Gemini Accident Repair Centres are at number 92. Its motor repair workshops employ 50 apprentices around the country on the Level 3 Accident Repair Technician Apprenticeship Programme. We're off to the northeast of England now for Durham County Council. It's at number 91 in the new Top 100 and over 450 of its 20,000 employees are apprentices with roles as diverse as fraud investigators, civil engineers, caterers and countryside rangers. At number 90, Barchester Healthcare is one of the biggest independent care providers in the UK. It provides more than uh, 15,000 staff in over 200 care homes nationwide and offers up to 300 care assistant apprenticeships each year. Hewlett-Packard Enterprise is at number 89. It's a global technology company that provides data storage products, edge computing services and networking equipment. And in England it recruits up to 50 apprentices each year in sales and marketing, business and operations and technology solutions. At number 88, NG Bailey is one of the country's leading engineering and services businesses within the building and infrastructure industry. One in ten of its 3,000 employees are apprentices, training in disciplines such as quantity surveying, industrial plumbing and heating and project engineering. One place ahead, Marks & Spencer are the first major retailer to feature in this year's Top 100 and it's our largest employer of apprentices so far, having provided more than 500 new apprenticeship places last year. At 86, Motus Commercials is the UK's largest independent commercial vehicle dealer. It employs over 100 apprentices at its truck and van dealerships across the country, working in sales, service and parts. With over 900 apprentices working in its care homes, dental practices, health cl clinics and call centres and corporate functions, Booper is the private healthcare group and it's at number 85 in the new top 100. At number 84, Salts Healthcare is a Midlands-based medical device manufacturer. A family-run company, one in ten of its workforce are apprentices, with programmes available from levels two to six. From town planners to librarians and social workers, Rochdale Borough Council is in Greater Manchester and has increased its apprenticeships fivefold over the last three years and now has 250 apprentices working in different council departments. It's at number 83 in the new rankings. We stay with the local government and head over to Derbyshire for Chesterfield Borough Council at number 82. The council promotes apprenticeships across the borough and employs more than 40 of its own apprentices. And at number 81, it's one of the most prestigious names in motor manufacturing. From its base in Crewe in Cheshire, in Cheshire, Bentley Motors is a long-term supporter of apprenticeships, employing over 200 apprentices on a four- or three-year programme in all of its areas in business, from engineering and IT to sales, marketing, purchasing and finance. So there we are, that's our first 20 employers in the new Top 100. So...
So our countdown is underway. Congratulations to all the employers who've been ranked so far. I'm delighted that we can speak to two of the employers that we've just heard about. I'm joined by Andrew Turner, Skills and Participation Officer at Rochdale Council, and Maninda Randawa, the Early Careers Development Lead at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Well, good afternoon to you both. Welcome to the Top 100 Apprenticeship Employers, and congratulations on being ranked in the first part of our countdown. Now, Andy, if I can start with you, I know Rochdale Council is a big supporter of apprenticeships. Uh, tell me just a little bit about some of the work you've been doing to expand the opportunities that you provide um, at the council. Well, yeah, it's great news that we've got into the top 100. Uh, excellent news for the borough. Um, what we do is we use the apprenticeship program very much uh, for succession planning. We, as, as a, a local authority, had a look at our demographic of um, workforce and realised it was quite ageing. So we've used the apprenticeship program very much to fill the gaps to ensure that people who are maybe retiring or due to leave the local authority that there's a whole host of young people who are coming up learning the ropes whilst people are still in post and in a way creating that succession plan um, which without the apprenticeship program would be missing. So by focusing on uh, your recruitment, um, is it actually, uh, by offering apprenticeships, do, does it really help in terms of um, attracting new talent to the council? Absolutely, yes. I mean, the, the quality of applications is, is noticeably increasing. Uh, I've been in apprenticeships a long time, and apprenticeships were always seen a few years ago as a, a little bit of a, a last chance saloon. Whereas now, some of the people who are applying for apprenticeships, you know, are, are real high quality. They're, they're people looking for a career rather than just something as a stopgap to get somewhere else. So, yeah, we're seeing the quality of candidates uh, rapidly increasing. And obviously, we're using the apprenticeship program as well for upskilling of our existing staff as well. So that succession planning is, al is also taking place with our own staff so that they can step up into senior roles as well. Fantastic. So working well for both new recruits and existing employees. Um, Maninda, if I can come to you, at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, I think we should just start by explaining what it is you do, because you're not the company that makes computers uh, and, and printers, are you? No, when I joined, I did join eight years ago at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, but we, we have um, split up from that company. We're Hewlett Packard Enterprise now, not Hewlett Packard Laptops and Printers Company. We do all the clever stuff behind the scenes. That might be all the stuff when you connect onto your mobile phone or Netflix, accessing the clouds, or how your daughter gets store, uh, data gets stored, and autonomous cars. So we, all do the, we do all the clever stuff in the background. So where do apprentices fit into that? Um, who are you recruiting? So apprentices, we have quite a diverse set of apprentices. We started off with our heartbeat, which is technology. So we started off in 2018 with technical apprentices. But from there, we've had a very positive explosion across the company, such as HR, finance, pre-sales, sales, business roles. We've got apprentices in pretty much most areas of our business units, which is phenomenal. We specialize mostly in our level threes to level fours, but now we've seen a great opportunity to upskill our existing staff in level fives and level sevens as well. So a very inclusive and a diverse set of apprentices we have. And were people surprised that you were offering apprenticeships? I mean, they, they might be assuming you'd just be recruiting computer scientists uh, as graduates from university. Yeah, that would be the typical thing of we'd just go traditionally to get really qualified people, but that's absolutely not the case. Hewlett Packard is a very people company and our culture is the heartbeat on everything. We want really good people from all walks of life, all walks of life. Uh, and we're really focusing on them as an individuals. Have they got a growth mindset, a positive mindset? And how can we help them with their career development as well? Now, Andy, I wanted to ask, um, uh, clearly, you're leading the way in Rochdale uh, from the council's point of view. Is what you're doing inspiring other local employers uh, to step up their apprenticeship recruitment as well? I think we're, we're trying to set an example. We're trying to be an organisation that other companies within our borough can look up to. Uh, and as, as a local authority as well, we do get involved in an awful lot of events, sort of business meetings, business breakfasts, that kind of thing, where we can, in, in a way, act impartially as well and support and guide our local businesses. In fact, last week, um, we led on a webinar around the new incentives that are available within our borough and, and nationally. So what we try and do is really put ourselves up there so that people can look at the organisation and say they're, they're actually 
doing as they are doing and doing as they're saying uh, at the same time. That's a really positive message, thank you. Um, and Meninda, if you were perhaps offering advice to school leavers, wondering should they go to university or should they start on perhaps a, a level four uh, apprenticeship, what would you say to them? Yeah, those individuals, I think especially apprentices, is a great opportunity. Whether you want to go to university or whether you want to take an apprenticeship is not, I think, as mentioned, apprentices back in the day where it kind of had maybe a negative perception about it. We, apprenticeship gives you a great platform to accelerate your career and learn new skills and have a great platform with a company as well. So I would really seriously look at apprentices. There's obviously great employers that have applied to be a part of the top 100 as well. And they're going to be from all different types of industries and background. And us at Hewlett Packard, it's a really important that we're giving these opportunities to these young individuals to succeed, especially with everything that's going on in the world. Well, congratulations to you both, uh, to Andy in Rochdale and Meninda at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And we'll be hearing lots more from other top 100 employers later in the programme. Now, we'd love to hear from you during the afternoon, so if you're excited to be in the new rankings or you have any questions about the new top 100, you can get in touch with us on Twitter. You can tweet us at Apprenticeships and using the hashtag Top100AppEmp, short for Apprenticeship Employers, of course. <laughs> but before our next countdown, Martin is going to explain some of the research behind the new top 100. Thanks, Janice. Now, at the beginning of the programme, we explained that the new Top 100 is a data-driven league table. So let's take a look at what we know about the country's top apprenticeship employers and how the new Top 100 rankings have been compiled. Let's start with the industries and business sectors that the Top 100 employers are from. There are 18 different sectors represented within the rankings, with local government making up the largest group, followed by professional services firms and employers from the health and social care sector. We have six well-known retailers, five from the world of banking and finance, but by the time we get round to the hospitality sector, there are just two employers in the new Top 100. Across the top 100, there are five organisations employing more than 2,500 apprentices, but over two-thirds of employers have fewer than 500 apprentices. So the new rankings aren't just for the country's largest employers. The median number of apprentices employed by a top 100 employer this year is 290. But which sectors have the largest number of apprentices? Well, with more than 21,000 apprentices, the armed forces account for more than a quarter of all apprenticeships. The next largest are the public sector employers, the retailers and the uh, accounting and professional services firms, which have over 20,000 apprentices. But the total number of apprentices employed is only one measure used to assess top 100 employers. The rankings also take into consideration what proportion of an employer's workforce is made up of apprentices. Now, looking at all the top 100 employers, apprentices make up 5.9% of employers' workforces. But you can see here that one in six of employers, over 10% of their employees are apprentices. So this gives us an alternative way of measuring employers' commitment to apprenticeships. On this chart, you'll see that the number of apprentices employed by each of the top 100 employers are represented by the grey bars. Although several of the biggest employers on the left have over 1,000 apprentices, that in some cases represents less than 2% of their workforce. Whereas on the right, I've picked out two employers that have fewer than 100 apprentices. But when we look at those same employers, according to their size of staff, they have some of the highest percentages um, in the top 100. So, I think that's enough following the science for now. It's time to find out who the next employers are in the new Top 100. We return to the countdown at number 80, and our first employer with more than 1,000 apprentices, Co-op, the retail to funeral care group, has apprenticeship programmes from level 2 to level 7 at its stores and operations nationwide, and at its Manchester support centre. Medway Council is at number 79, one of nine councils to feature in this year's Top 100. A fifth of the council's new employees joined apprenticeship programmes last year, in roles from occupational therapists and paralegals, to IT specialists and facilities managers. At 78 Design and Engineering Consultancy, Arup, employs over 200 apprentices at its 11 locations across England, working on a wide range of professional programmes like civil engineering, building services, quantity surveying, transport planning and environmental consulting. 
Based in Oxfordshire, the UK Atomic Energy Authority's mission is to lead the commercial development of fusion power and sustainable nuclear energy. Its long-established apprenticeship scheme began with Level 3 Advanced Engineering Apprentices, but now includes roles in areas like finance, procurement, public relations and HR. At number 76, ISG is an international construction services company that offers five-year apprenticeship programs that provide a pathway to professional chartership in quantity surveying and construction management. Retail giant Tesco is at number 75. With over 1,300 apprentices, it's the largest apprenticeship employer so far in this year's Top 100, offering programs from Level 2 to degree apprenticeships at Level 6 for both existing employees and new recruits. One Place Ahead Home Group is one of the UK's largest providers of high quality housing and integrated housing, health and social care. It provides apprenticeship programmes at all levels in roles such as customer service, business leadership procurement and health care. At number 73, the Department for Education is one of three major government departments in the new Top 100. More than 1 in 20 of the DfE's 7,000 employees are apprentices and it offers programmes at all levels of apprenticeships. House builder Taylor Wimpy is at 72 and has a long history of providing a trade apprenticeship for its key trades of carpentry, bricklaying, scaffolding, roofing, painting and decorating. The company's level 2 and level 3 apprenticeship programmes typically take between 3 and 5 years to complete. Based in Peterborough, BGL Group is an insurance and financial services company with brands like Budget Insurance, Beagle Street and CompareTheMarket.com. Its apprenticeship programmes include digital marketing, technology, professional services and its business pathway apprenticeship. Consumer goods company PepsiCo is at number 70. It makes popular brands like Quaker Oats, Doritos, Tropicana, Pepsi Max and Walker's Crisps, which are produced at the world's largest crisp factory in Leicester. Its 3,700 employees include over 300 apprenticeships on programmes at level 2, 3 and 4. We head back to the construction sector for Vinci at 69. It employs more than 200 apprentices on a range of programmes including civil engineering, quantity surveying, electrical maintenance, plumbing and business administration from level 2 up to degree apprenticeships. It's up to the northeast of England now for the first of three NHS trusts who are ranked in the new top 100. South Tees Hospital NHS Foundation Trust has over 250 apprentices including more than 50 staff who are completing master's level apprenticeships. We return south for the Apollo Motor Group. It's at number 67 and provides up to 25 level 2 and level 3 apprenticeships annually at its 15 accident repair centres with roles in vehicle refinishing, body repair, parts and mechanical electricity electrical and trim. At number 66, the London and South Eastern Railway is the first of five employers from the transport sector. Better known to commuters as South, South Eastern, it operates train services between London, Kent and East Sussex, with almost 300 apprentices working in customer service, engineering and business. Our next employer is another big name from the world of retail. Asda is the third company so far in the top 100 with over a thousand apprentices and offers an extensive range of programmes at all levels for new recruits and existing employees. At number 64, HML Group is a property project management company with 20 offices around the company. Almost one in ten of its 600 strong workforce are apprentices, a third of whom started their apprenticeship in the last year. ACOM is one of the world's leading infrastructure firms. In this country, it provides up to 200 new apprenticeships each year in engineering, transportation and development planning and surveying and project management, with coordinated programmes that can take apprentices from Level 3 to Level 7 apprenticeships. The newly formed Liverpool University Hospital NHS Foundation Trust is at number 62 and brings together four Merseyside hospitals who together employ over 400 apprentices in combined workforce of 12,000. And at number 61, we're back in the south for Hertfordshire County Council. It's our sixth council so far in the new Top 100, with more than 240 apprentices working in different departments across the council. So, let's have a recap from number 80 to 61. So that's our next 20 employers revealed. Well done to everyone who's made the ranking so far. I'm really pleased that we can speak to one of the employers we've just featured. I'm joined by Alison Atkins, HR Director at PepsiCo. Hi, Alison. Hi, thank you so much for having us. No worries. So what's PepsiCo's approach to apprenticeships then? So well, we're delighted that at PepsiCo we've got a number of our apprentices working across our sites in the UK, helping to produce some of the nation's favourite snacks and beverages. 
Um, we've been providing pr- apprentices as part of a meaningful opportunity to gain work, build skills and start successful careers in the food and drink industry for, for a number of years. Um, and we've been extending our programs now. So we have nine different pathways as part of our Grow Our Own program, um, enabling people to enter into our industry. So you have quite a few apprentices then. Why are apprentices so important at PepsiCo? Well, we place great value on and focus on lifelong learning and raising the bar on talent and diversity. And, and apprenticeship pathways are a great way to attract new entrants and also to develop um, existing employees. And it's not just the cohort of learners that, um, that develop as part of their apprenticeship, it's those around them, so their buddies, their mentors, trainers, managers. It kind of has a ripple effect through the organisation, um, which just enables us to boost our own capability, boost our performance and grow our talent pipeline. Mm-hmm. And how have apprenticeships helped you retain and recruit young talent? I think because we have um, programmes ranging from level two to level six, so we've been able to bring new entrants in into our technical um, food apprenticeship um, and then have people on supply planning apprenticeships as, as an alternative um, to full-time study at university. Um, that's really enabled us to attract a diverse range of talent, um, including from different backgrounds um, and, and different age groups. So two-thirds of our apprentices are, are still age under 35, but 14% are age 46 and over. So it's enabling them to come into a different industry and retrain and have a second career. And you did mention that you make some of the nation's favourite snacks. How popular are yeah. apprenticeships at PepsiCo? Oh, they're really popular. So, so we, 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 um, I guess we have a, a, a large um, application rate for our apprenticeships and, um, across all, and we have them across all of our sites in England. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give to any aspiring apprentices? I think the most important thing is to to know what it is that you're looking for, to to show um, that ambition um, and interest, um, and and to come in willing to learn. So just be really willing to to be open to new opportunities. 30% of our um, apprentices who start with us on their initial apprenticeship have gone on to further promotions. Um, They've gone on to advanced apprenticeships. We've retained 90 percent of our graduating apprentices and they I think that opportunity to come in and just seize opportunities because there's opportunities for talent in an organization like PepsiCo everywhere. It's so important thank you so much for talking to me Alison. Thank you. Alison (laughs) Alison Atkins HR director at PepsiCo there thank you very much indeed and we're really glad that so many of you have been getting in touch on social media we'll be sharing your messages and comments later in the program so please keep them coming but now it's time for another look at the data that's gone into the new top 100. Thank you Shanice now as well as looking at the total number of apprentices employed at an organization the new rankings also consider how many apprentices started their training in the past year In the year from April 2019 until March 2020, more than 44,000 new apprenticeships started at the top 100 employers. More than two-fifths of these new starts were level two intermediate apprenticeships, leading to a qualification that's equivalent to five GCSEs. A third were level three advanced apprenticeships, the equivalent of two A-levels, and just under a quarter were higher apprenticeships at level four or above. One in eight were either degree or master's level apprenticeships at level six or seven. As well as having the most apprentices overall, the armed forces also had the largest number of apprenticeship start during the past year. There were over 4,500 new starts in retail and more than 3,500 in the public sector and hospitality. Now it was interesting to see how apprentices arrived onto their programmes. It's easy to assume that most would be new recruits who joined in order to do an apprenticeship, but across the top 100 employers, more than half of those who started an apprenticeship were existing employees, and fewer than one in 20 were progressing from an earlier apprenticeship. The top 100 apprenticeship employers also considered the the diversity of apprentices starting new apprenticeship programmes over the last year. On average, 57% of apprentices are men, 43% are women, one in seven are from the black, Asian or minority ethnic communities, and just under 6% have a learning difficulty or disability. 
Finally, we examined whether employers' apprentices successfully complete their apprenticeships, and if so, do they progress to further employment or another apprenticeship? Well, as you might imagine from the country's leading apprenticeship employers, the overwhelming majority of apprentices at the top 100 employers do complete their apprenticeships. And at most employers, more than 80% of apprentices continue into employment or, can, or join an, uh, an apprenticeship programme at the next level. So there we are. That completes our brief look at the data behind the new top 100 rankings. Speaking of which, I think it's time we found out who else is on our list of the nation's top apprenticeship employers. We return to the countdown with the Valuation Office Agency at number 60. The VOA is the government body that values properties for council tax and business rates. It offers apprenticeships from level 2 up to the level 6 chartered surveyor programme. At 59, the Norfolk-based flagship group builds, owns and manages over 31,000 homes for people in need across the east of England. It employs over 70 apprentices working on programmes from plastering, bricklaying and plumbing to accounting, legal and IT. Led by Mayor Andy Burnham, the Greater Manchester Combined Authority is at number 58. It's an enthusiastic promoter of apprenticeships within the region and more than 11% of the authority's own staff are apprentices. That's the highest proportion so far in the new top 100. We're back in the northeast for CPI at 57, an independent technology innovation centre that brings together academia, businesses, government and investors to translate bright ideas and research into the marketplace. It has over 30 apprentices, including level 6 laboratory scientist degree apprentices. At number 56, Asantra is a global manufacturer of packaging and component parts used in thousands of products worldwide. It offers apprenticeships in plastic injection moulding, machine setting, tool making, lithographic printing and carter manufacturing. On to 55 and financial services company AJ Bell, which offers apprenticeships for investment operations specialists and a digital technology degree apprenticeship programme based at its head office in Salford Keys, Manchester. The newly renamed FCDO Services is at number 54. It's a trading fund for the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office and last year recruited apprentices to work in engineering, logistics, IT, finance, data analysis, surveying and accounting. At number 53, the Manufacturing Technology Centre is an independent research and technology organisation bridging the gap between academia and industry. Established in Coventry in 2010, it now has over 700 employees including 40 Level 2 and level three apprentices. Aon is a global professional services company at 52 in the new top 100. In this country it has over 400 apprentices and offers up to five apprenticeship programs in client management, actuarial work, insurance and reinsurance, investment consulting and employee benefits. In an unusual twist, one place ahead of Aon is Willis Towers Watson, the advisory broking and solutions company that has just announced it will soon be merging with Aon. But in its own right, Willis Towers Watson currently employs over 250 apprentices at levels 3, 4, 6 and 7. We're into the top half of the rankings now with the U Trust, one of the smaller apprenticeship employers in this year's top 100. It's a charity that supports more than 24,000 people in the south of England in specialist areas such as homelessness, learning disabilities, domestic violence and abuse and mental health. At number 49, Cap Gemini is a global leader in consulting technology services and digital transformation. It was one of the first companies in England to invest in degree apprenticeships and now has over 300 apprentices on digital and technology, business, cyber security and finance programs. Iceland Foods is a well-known high street and home delivery retailer that employs over 750 apprentices. It recruits around 300 annually for its level 3 and level 4 retail apprenticeships that provide a pathway to becoming a store manager. One place ahead and we're in West Yorkshire for Leeds City Council. One in 20 of the council's 15,000 staff are apprentices working on apprenticeship programmes at every level from intermediate up to master's level. At number 46, Gloucester-based Clarks and Evans is an electrical contractor that wires homes across England and Wales and is a long established electrical training specialist. An impressive two-fifths of its 980 employees are apprentices and the company recruited over 150 new level 3 apprentices last year. Siva Logistics is at number 45. It's a global supply chain and freight management company that employs 4,500 staff in this country, including over 180 apprentices at every level from 2 up to level 7. For number 44, we return to the northeast of England and the only police force to be ranked in this year's top 100. Northumbria Police is the sixth largest force in England with over 3,500 officers and 1,700 staff, including more than 250 apprentices. 
In the West Midlands, Dudley Metropolitan Borough Council is at number 43, and its 350 apprentices work on a wide range of apprenticeship programmes, including vehicle maintenance, customer service, heating and ventilation, payroll, horticultural and teaching assistance. At number 42, Unilever is one of the world's best-known consumer goods companies, producing bands brands like Ben & Jerry's, Purcell, Shaw, PG Tips, Tony & Guy and Pot Noodle. It offers apprenticeships in business and technology, research and development, supply chain and engineering. And at 41, Capita is an international business process outsourcing and professional services company headquartered in London. Over 400 of its 41,000 staff in England are apprentices working on programmes from level 3 up to level 7. So there we are, those are the latest employers in the new top 100. So that's our third countdown done and we're already into the top half of the new top 100. I'm really pleased to be joined by two of the employers that we've just seen in the latest rankings. Helen Tyndall, HR Director at Iceland Foods and Maurizio Alvarez, People Acquisition Lead at Northumbria Police. Good afternoon, welcome to you both. Um, if I can start with you Helen, um, you're one of the biggest names um, in retail. Uh, retail is often a tough sell in terms of getting people in entry level. Tell us about your apprenticeship programmes and, and how much of a difference it's made in terms of getting some great talent into the business? We have uh, started our programme with management apprenticeships in order that we could really try and generate some succession internally. Um, and over the last three years, we've started from zero and we've ended up um, with uh, more than doubling our internal succession to the store manager position, where now we take 50% of our store managers from within the business, and that's been driven purely through the apprenticeship programme, which is fantastic. Um, we are now in a world where we're attracting apprentices um, within the business and externally into supervisory position, and we're also developing and rolling out now retail frontline colleague apprentices apprenticeships. I, I guess the reason why we can attract our colleagues um, into the business and onto an apprenticeship programme is that we can define a really clear joined up journey from level two to level three to level four apprenticeships um, and beyond. So people can see how they can truly build a career into management with us. And it gives it a really nice um, defined time span as well, doesn't it, as, as people progress uh, through the two levels? Uh, yeah, well, through the three levels, actually, and it can be dependent on the on the person, on their own ambition, their own life stage, and what they've got going on. They can put the brakes on or they can accelerate. Um, realistically, you could leave school and end up um, as a store manager with a level four um, apprenticeship, earning the same as a, as a graduate. Um, and, and it's a genuine alternative then to the more academic route. Maritia, if I can just turn to you, um, well done, uh, you're the only police force to be ranked uh, in this year's top 100, so congratulations um, on that front. Tell me a little bit about the apprenticeships that you offer, because uh, we're talking about support staff, are we also talking about um, police constables as well? We are indeed, yeah, thank you very much, uh, we're very pleased and obviously um, very excited about making it to the top 100. So um, the force has uh, had apprentices for, for a significant number of years, but clearly, um, over the last few years, we've been able to develop a national level, um, a new entry route for constables like you just outlined there. So we have apprentices in business administration and project management and the more traditional fields, but um, our main offer right now is on frontline policing. So that is the PCDA, is the Police Constable Degree Apprenticeship Programme, and it's a level six um, apprenticeship programme that we use as a significant um, entry route right now for new constables. Now, um, the, the programme lasts three years and people, um, uh, uh, student officers have the opportunity to build up the knowledge as they are doing the work, which is the main principle of apprenticeships, yes. And are the apprenticeships proving popular? I know policing is heading towards being an all graduate profession, so hence the degree apprenticeships that you're describing. Um, are, they, are they straightforward to recruit for or, or is it a difficult sell? I think I think that the police service is one of those that uh, enjoys from being very popular and very attractive to a number of engines, but we're not very 
much concern about the fact that the service will become an all graduate market or all graduate um, service. But what is most important here is that we've got the opportunity to have the right skills and the right um, induction and the right uh, elements to, uh, to equip our offices to serve our communities. So um, the apprenticeship program in itself is very popular. We have a number of people and I appreciate that the numbers that were quoted earlier uh, are very significant. However, we have actually made it now to 411 apprentices as we speak. So because of the most recent intakes, we have actually increased the number. So it is very popular. It's not difficult for us to offer the programme. And of course, it's a very tangible opportunity for people to join the service, to be trained to the professional level, at the degree level. And obviously, uh, the, the cost of the apprenticeship is met through the existing arrangements so there is no cost to the prospective students and officers. Well it sounds like it's been a great success so far, uh, long may it continue. Now Helen, you talked about how quickly you've expanded your own uh, apprenticeship programme, where do you see things developing uh, in the years ahead? Uh, we're going to continue to invest. We have um, started out by making sure that we've gone from zero spend to slowly building up and learning as we go and listening to our learners alongside our provider to make sure that we can provide the right thing but we will just increase that spend um, and we'll provide apprenticeships because we see the the real common sense and simple knitting together of the learning that has to be done and the um, skills and behavioral uh, attributes that somebody needs to be able to fulfill these roles and to, to build their career with us so it's onwards and upwards for us we see our investment in apprenticeships uh, doubling and beyond over the next two to three years. Well, that's really good news. Um, Helen from Iceland and Maurizio from Northumbria Police, thank you both very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we're almost at the end of the first part of the programme and we've counted down the first 60 employers in the new top 100. We've heard about how the rankings have been compiled and we've spoken to several of this year's top employers. But before we break, we wanted to share some of your comments and messages. So thank you for all of your uh, tweets and messages on social media. Um, here's one. Uh, we're delighted that so many of you can join us today, uh, despite the current restrictions. Uh, there's a hello to Claire uh, L. Connor, who's watching virtually from her living room. And it's great to see the BAME Apprenticeship Alliance following along too. Uh, Peregrine Skills have been watching the broadcast live and a uh, glad to see some of the biggest brands in the world uh, adopting apprenticeships into their workforce. And Portsmouth High are also joining us to learn about the change in the school leaver market in COVID. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Now, thank you all for getting in touch. Uh, it's great to hear from all of you. Keep them coming in. We're going to take a short break now, but we'll be back to count you down all the way to this year's number one apprenticeship employer. See you soon. Tonight we're at the 2019 National Apprenticeship Awards, a really special evening recognising the talents, the success of the best apprentices in the country. It's just an event that exemplifies what is good in apprenticeships, whether that's an employer or an individual, and you can really celebrate that for one night. I was never anyone's apprentice, uh, but I definitely uh, have been 
a mentee. And I think the idea of mentees and apprentices are incredibly important and something that has helped to change my life and lead me down the right career path. Without my apprenticeship, I wouldn't be where I am today. The knowledge that I gained throughout my apprenticeship led me to be able to start my own business, which is fundamentally why these awards are so important to celebrate and showcase all the fantastic achievements that dedicated apprentices put in. Our apprentices do such hard work throughout the Navy. We've got 3,700 apprentices enrolled at any one time. So for us to be able to recognise their worth and what they're producing is key to us. It's absolutely incredible. We are so overjoyed to win gold in the Nationals today. It's just incredible. I've made my mum proud, which is the best thing for me. Now I can use this platform to promote apprenticeships to young students and parents and teachers. An amazing feeling and it's absolute testimony to the hard work we put in at Home Group and what apprenticeships can bring to a company. They are just incredible and this is for them. It's, it's just a great feeling. I'd recommend other apprentices to enter into the awards. It's a really good night, it's great atmosphere and it's really good to be recognised and to celebrate your apprenticeship. So for us, the Royal Navy sponsoring an award. It shows the investment that we make and we want to support other companies investing into their apprentices too. I've always sort of said the best leaders have been led in the right way. So um, I think that this sort of programme is the sort of thing that every employer should be invested in. Welcome back, you're watching a special broadcast from the National Apprenticeship Service to count down the top 100 apprenticeship employers for 2020. But before we return to the rankings, Martin is with the Director of Apprenticeships at ESFA. Peter Mucklow, welcome to uh, the Top 100 Apprenticeship Employers. It's very good to have you here. Now, the National Apprenticeship Service um, promotes apprenticeships and encourages um, uh, not only prospective uh, apprentices to be applying for schemes, but also uh, looking at employers, encouraging them to provide uh, high quality apprenticeships. How does the Top 100 Apprenticeship Employers support that work? Well, thank you, Martin. It's great to be here on this day. Um, the, I mean, first of all, I'd just like to thank all the employers who have applied uh, for these awards and, uh, and, and have they're been to be in the top 100. Um, but also to congratulate you know, um, every employer who's made it into that top 100 ranking. Um, it's, uh, it's incredibly competitive uh, and it's great to see that recognised. I think what's particularly important is that being in the top 100 is showcasing and recognising employers who have provided really high quality apprenticeship experiences for their apprentices. So it's not just the numbers of starts, it's the experience of the apprentices on the programme and the outcomes for them, because that's what it's all about. It's all about the, um, the experience and the outcomes for the apprentices on the programme. Now you've already seen some quite big household names as we've, we've gone through the countdown. Uh, between them, uh, this year's top 100 uh, actually accounted for about one in eight of all the apprenticeship starts um, in England over the last year. You must be really pleased to see so many of those big names recognised. It's really exciting um, because um, being in the top 100 or just being a really significant apprenticeship employer, I think really signals that you are an employer that people will want to work for. Um, particularly in these most difficult times, because apprenticeships 
are not just about providing a job for somebody now, they're the foundation for a career. And if you're an apprenticeship employer, then you're showing that you're going to invest in your new recruits. You're going to train them for the long term and for, and for a, a really good career. And that's why it's so exciting to see um, not just household names, uh, but also employers who are recognised as being excellent employers generally really recognised in these awards. Now, it was interesting going through the data uh, that we got from uh, people's entries. We can see that a quarter um, of the apprenticeships uh, are at level four and above. Um, are you keen to see employers offering an even wider range uh, of apprenticeships, given that perhaps in the past there have been more level two and level three apprenticeships on offer? Well, I think it's not sufficiently widely known that there are now apprenticeships for everybody. Um, level two and level three, those entry level apprenticeships, remain really, really important, uh, both for young people who are starting off with their career um, and need, need that start, also for adults who are um, uh, training for uh, those, those level jobs. But we've now got a much wider range of what we call higher technical apprenticeships, a level four and level five, for the technicians of the future. And the people entering those apprentices uh, will often have significant prior qualifications. Sure. Uh, and um, an ever-expanding range of degree apprenticeships, um, so real, real professional roles. And that seems to be a fast-growing area of the market, doesn't it? I, I, and I'm delighted that it is, because it, it also offers a different route uh, to a degree uh, for many people than the traditional three-year um, higher education university experience. And for many people, um, that's really attractive because you can earn and learn uh, your way to a degree, but also to do so with a really high profile employer. But I think it's also really important because we, we naturally think that all apprentices are young people, but of course they're not. Apprenticeships are for adults mm. and they're, they're for adult retraining and upskilling. And at a time when so many adults are going to need to upskill and retrain, it's more important than ever that message gets across. Now, I think we should probably finish just by talking about the year that we've all been having. Uh, of course, the ongoing coronavirus situation means that uh, there's considerable uncertainty for lots of employers around the country, uh, difficulties for current apprentices with their training, and of course, uncertainty about prospective apprentices as well. What would your message be to them? Well, I've been inspired by um, how employers and their apprentices have kept going and in many cases thrive during this incredible pandemic. So we have seen tens of thousands of apprentices who have been on furlough, continuing with their apprenticeship through that furlough and completing. Uh, we've seen very large numbers of apprentices who've had to pause their apprenticeship, resuming their, apprentice, their apprenticeship. And um, for, the, um, for any apprentice who unfortunately is made redundant, and I'm pleased to say that many employers have sought to continue to support their apprenticeships, even when they've had really difficult decisions to make. Um, there is support available for those apprentices to find new opportunities. So we can't avoid the hard fact this is a really difficult time for apprenticeship employers uh, and for some apprentices. But that foundation of the apprenticeship programme, the commitment to it that apprenticeship employers have, is, I think, um, providing really good opportunities for apprentices to uh, thrive through this pandemic. Well, reassuring words for the months ahead. Thank you very much. Peter Mucklow, Director of Apprenticeships. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. It's now time to find out which else of the nation's apprenticeship employers have made it into the new rankings. Roll the music. We're back to the top 100 countdown at number 40 with Covent's Laboratories. It's an international pharmaceutical development and laboratory testing business with over 150 apprentices at its sites in England. At number 39, it's Abellio Transport Holdings, the company that runs train services in Merseyside, the Midlands, East Anglia, as well as buses on 52 routes in London. It employs over 380 apprentices across its operations on programmes at level 2, 3, 5 and 7. We head to Cannock in Staffordshire for Finning. 
Britain at number 38. It's the world's largest Caterpillar dealer, selling, renting and providing parts and servicing for cat equipment and engines. And one in ten of its UK workforce are service engineering apprentices. The Priory Group is a major provider of behavioural care in the UK, caring for around 30,000 people each year with conditions including depression, anxiety, drug and alcohol addiction, eating disorders and self-harming. It's our fourth employer so far in the top 100 with more than 1,000 apprentices. At number 36, we return to the automotive services industry. Zenith is a specialist vehicle leasing and fleet management company. It launched its apprenticeship program in 2016 and now employs more than 60 apprentices across the business. Reed Specialist Recruitment is at number 35. It provides recruitment services for permanent, contract, temporary and outsourced jobs and offers recruitment apprenticeships at level 2 and 3 as well as a level 4 software development apprenticeship. At 34, the AA is the UK's largest motoring organisation, providing nationwide roadside assistance, insurance, finance and other services. 220 of the AA's 6,500 staff are apprentices, with programmes available at every level from 2 up to 7. One place ahead and we're off to the East Midlands for the City of Lincoln Council. It's our highest rated council in this year's Top 100, with one in 20 of its 680 employees on apprenticeships at level 2, 3, 4 and 5. At number 32, it's another familiar name from the world of retail. Sainsbury's is the largest employer of apprentices so far in the top 100, with over 1,500 of its 124,000 staff now enrolled on apprenticeship programmes. Just outside of the top 30, Cambridge Assessment is an international exams group that's part of the University of Cambridge. It has over 100 apprentices working on apprenticeship programmes from level 2 to level 7, including its new data scientist degree apprenticeships. At number 30, Nottingham City Homes, manages over 27,000 homes on behalf of Nottingham City Council. Almost one in ten of its staff are apprentices with roles available in customer service, housing management, caretaking, quantity surveying and a range of construction trades. HSBC is one of the largest banking and financial services organisations in the world. In this country it employs almost 500 apprentices with two main entry level programmes at level three and level six degree apprenticeships. It's number 29 in the new top 100. At 28, it's E.E. E. Smith Contracts, the specialist interior fit-out contractor based in Leicester. With a long history of training apprentice joiners and cabinet makers, 70 of its 110 current factory workers are former apprentices. And across the business, more than 40 of its 350 staff are now apprentices. We're off to Corby in the East Midlands for RS Components at number 27. It's an international distributor of electronic, electrical and industrial components it employs over 200 apprentices. At number 26, the Learning Curve Group is a national training and educational specialist. It's a well-known apprenticeship training provider, but the company is ranked in the top 100 in its own right because one in six of its own employees are apprentices. At 25, the Lloyds Banking Group is the financial services group behind Lloyds Bank, Bank of Scotland, Halifax and Scottish Widows. It offers apprenticeships in a wide range of roles from financial services to digital technology and currently employs more than 1,000 200 apprentices. Rent-A-Killed Initial is at number 24. It's a global company that provides pest control and hygiene services. In the UK, 300 of its 3,000 employees are apprentices, with most on the Level 2 Customer Service Apprenticeship. At 23, BAE Systems is a British defence, security and aerospace company. With over 1,700 apprentices, it's the biggest apprenticeship employer in the top 100 so far and offers 25 entry-level programmes in areas like engineering, project management, aircraft maintenance, finance and business. KPMG is the first of the big four accounting and professional services firms in the new top 100. It recruits more than 300 apprentices annually for roles like audit, business services and digital software engineering and one in 20 of the firm's 13,000 UK staff are now on an apprenticeship. And just missing out on a place in the top 20, the Department for Work and Pensions is the first employer in the new rankings with more than 2,000 apprentices. It offers apprenticeship programmes for new recruits and existing employees at entry level at every level from 2 to level 7. So let's have a recap from numbers 40 to 21 in the new top 100.
Many congratulations to all the employers we've just featured. You're officially a top 100 apprenticeship employer. I'm delighted we can speak to two of them now though. I'm joined by Richard Hamer, Education and Skills Director at BA Systems and Laura Thurston, People Director at Lloyds Banking Group. Well, good afternoon to you both. Richard, let me start with you. Uh, BA Systems, uh, a very, very long established apprenticeship employer. Um, where do apprentices fit into your business? I mean, Martin, the apprenticeships are absolutely fundamental to BA Systems business. They sort of help drive our future capability requirements in terms of the numbers that we need and also the specialist skills that we have in our sector. So, as you mentioned in your your, your piece, we've got 1,700 at the point um, that the, the survey was done, um, over 2,000 in fact now, and across a, you know, a very wide range of different levels, so two through to seven, um, a good spectrum, make it back to what Peter says. And, you know, over 20 standards at the, po at the point in which the, the survey was done, but in fact, in this year, now over 50 um, different apprenticeship standards. So, a whole range of different areas and opportunities for young people. And, and none of it's recent, is it, uh, Peter? You've been, uh, Richard, sorry, we've, we've been uh, recruit, recruiting at BA Systems for uh, apprentices for many, many years, not just uh, under the latest systems. Indeed, I mean, sort of, I've been in business since 2004. We've had apprentices, you know, literally before that. You know, it's, it's ingrained in our business and in man engineering manufacturing. They're, they're essential to meet our future and I current needs. So. Um, now, Laura, let me turn to you. Um, uh, congratulations, Lloyd's uh, Banking Group uh, in the top 100 apprentice employers, a nice high ranking for you as well. Um, tell us a little bit about your strategy in terms of, of uh, where apprentices uh, fit into the bank. So at Lloyd's Banking Group, uh, we have over 25 uh, programmes uh, which are absolutely linked to our future skills agenda. So um, it's absolutely critical to our strategy and our success of the group. Uh, the apprenticeship programmes are something that we offer to all colleagues, both uh, to attract colleagues into the organisation, as well as for existing colleagues to uh, develop themselves, progress, perhaps change roles, as well as completely reskilling. So uh, interesting some of the conversations so far. Um, definitely, I would say apprenticeships is a really integral part of our strategy as an organisation. And do you now see this in parallel with your graduate recruitment? Uh, because uh, I think if I look back over the last 30 years or so, um, uh, many of the, the high street banks uh, were, were largely uh, led by school leavers. Uh, it tipped more towards graduates uh, in the meantime, and, and the, the, the balance seems to be swinging back the other way again. So it's definitely something that I think increasingly young people are really interested in opportunity to both get that critical work experience as well as um, get qualifications and actually this is a really important and valuable route for them to do that. Uh, certainly at Lloyds Banking Group we see our apprentices and our graduates really enjoying enriching careers, getting different experiences, working in the different areas of the group, whether that's in finance, technology, our different areas. So um, yes, it's, uh, it's definitely an opportunity to really strengthen both qualifications, getting skills, expertise, as well as that really essential experience to grow your career. So um, a really brilliant uh, initiative. Um and Richard, if, uh, if somebody's joining you as a school leaver, perhaps joining on a, a level four program, how does their progress compare with somebody who goes to university and joins you after that? Are you getting people to those sort of key moments in their careers quicker by going via the apprenticeship route? I mean, BA Systems, to be said, we, we have a history of recruiting apprentices at all levels, and they do provide a fantastic pathway into skills. We recruit graduates too, but um, um, if you do an apprenticeship, the combination of that academic I couldn't hear the others, though, either. Right, that combination of academic learning, the skills and the behaviours, mean it does give an Sorry, accelerated programme. So if, you, if you're looking at engineering um, opportunities, uh, Martin, we do see people earlier having a, a broader range of skills which is part of the reason why we've seen a range of skills which is part of the reason why we've seen our degree apprenticeship higher apprenticeship programs grow so rapidly so a third of our intake now um, are you know higher in degree programs and that's because the engineering and wide like project management and quality other functions are seeing the opportunity that giving young people that 
deep experience of work alongside academic helps make them more competent, faster and quicker. Um, we still value degree, um, traditional graduate route, we're recruiting large numbers of graduates too, but we do see, you know, apprenticeships absolutely vital and, and, and you know, huge, huge enthusiasm for clearly for young people too um, at this particular point in time. And a great success story. Now, Laura, I'm sorry we've had some, some sound problems, but if you can still hear me, um, what, what's your vision for the coming years? How do you see apprenticeships expanding uh, even further within Lloyd's Banking Group? It's definitely a, a really important avenue for us to grow skills for the future. Um, as, as technology changes, as our customers want different solutions from us, you know, if we think about ourselves as um, customers of the bank, um, many people want different solutions from the bank in terms of how they bank, when they bank, what those solutions look like. And actually apprenticeships is a really brilliant way for us to um, offer our colleagues, both new joiners as well as existing colleagues, the opportunity to really increase their skill base, perhaps diversify, go into a new area and an area that's going to really help us build the bank of the future um, so it really is a, a, a brilliant uh, and important uh, part of our strategy from a people strategy perspective to really strengthen skills for the group to make sure we're delivering the right solutions for our customers that's fantastic well Richard and Laura thank you both very much for joining us and for sharing such uh, such positive stories uh, about the success of both your companies good luck for the future thank you Right, it's almost time for our next countdown now, but before we do, please keep your messages coming in on social media using the hashtag Top100AppEmp. You can at us on Twitter, at Apprenticeships. Right, it's now time to find out who's in the top 20. We return to the new rankings at number 20. Network Rail owns, operates and develops Britain's railway infrastructure. It's a major apprenticeship employer with more than 1,600 apprentices working on engineering, IT and business services and finance programmes. At number 19, it's the accounting and professional services firm BDO. One in six of its employees in England are apprentices and the firm recruits up to 400 a year for the four-year level seven apprenticeship that leads onto a professional qualification in audit or tax. The London Ambulance Service is this year's highest ranking NHS trust in the top 100. Its 5,000 frontline control room and support staff include more than 400 apprentices on programs from level two up to level seven. It's at number 18. One place ahead, we return to the accounting and professional services sector for Price Bailey. The firm's school leaver programme includes apprenticeships at level four and level seven, and almost a fifth of the staff in its offices in London and East Anglia are now apprentices. At 16, we stay in the same sector for the second of the big four accounting and professional services firms. EY has more than 1,200 apprentices with entry-level programmes available in assurance, tax, strategy and transactions, digital and technology, and leadership and management. We have three professional service firms in a row now because PwC is at number 15. It's the largest apprenticeship employer in the sector with over 1,500 apprentices and entry level programmes in audit, consulting, deals, operations and tax plus its digital and technology degree apprenticeship. The employer at number 14 is Lander Automotive, the Birmingham-based manufacturer of products for the automotive sector. It's one of the smaller employers in the rankings, but it's been offering apprenticeships for over 40 years and an impressive 45% of its workforce are apprentices, the highest proportion of any employer in the new top 100. At number 13, Aspire Housing is a housing provider and property developer in Staffordshire and Cheshire. One in eight of the company's staff are apprentices with programmes available at level two, three and four. We return to the accounting and professional services sector at 12 for Grant Thornton. Almost a fifth of the firm's 4,200 employees are apprentices and it offers school leaver programmes in audit, tax and business advisory at levels 4 and 7. And at this year's number 11, it's HFT, one of the country's largest and longest established charities supporting people with learning disabilities. HFT began offering support worker apprenticeships in 2017 and now its 600 apprentices make up a fifth of the charity staff. So that's 10 more of the country's top apprenticeship employers. Well done to all of you. I'm really pleased that we can now speak to two employers from the top 20. Anita Davenport Brooks, People Manager at Lander Automotive, and Darren Avery, Apprenticeship Lead at the London Ambulance Trust. Hello to both of you. Darren, I saw you cheering there. <laughs> you did, yes. I was very pleased. 
congratulations right. for being in the top 20. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tell us about the apprenticeships at the London Ambulance Service then. So, I mean, first of all, we, we're really delighted to be part of the um, top 100 apprenticeship, empl apprenticeship employees and to be in the top 20 representing the ambulance service in the wider NHS um, Trust. We're really, really pleased for this year has been a year like no other for the London Ambulance Service and one of our most challenging years. So we're, we're really delighted. Um, apprenticeships, we offer apprenticeships, as you said, at the various levels from level two right up to level seven um, for uh, existing staff as well as uh, majority which are recruited um, into our organisation um, and mainly working our apprentices on the front line in front line roles. So do all of your front line staff go for an apprenticeship when they join? No not not all of our um, uh, front line staff do um, but we do have a career pathway that mm -hmm. we largely utilise apprenticeships um, to develop the skills um, so we can take somebody in at entry level now and we from via apprenticeships we can take them right through to becoming a paramedic um, in a registered role um, so but the the staff that you see out there in London on the, on the ambulances um, many of them are um, apprentices um, that are support in London um, within the London Ambulance Service. Amazing. Anita, let's bring you in on this now. So you're a very long established apprenticeship employer and apprentices make up almost half of your workforce, which is remarkable. Yes, it's absolutely a fantastic achievement for the business. Why are they so Can important you to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are they so important? Um, I think what we realised was uh, back in 2016 that we had um, most of our workforce, 51% was over the age of 45. So we thought, well, we needed to inject some new energy and diversity into the business and also to uh, recruit um, younger people into the business, into roles that we were looking for the future within um, engineering and quality. So we now have over 51% of our workforce are under the age of 40. Um, we've now managed to move a lot of the apprentices that started in 2016, 2017 into roles in quality engineering, HR, purchasing, and even team leaders. So our plan to have a talent pipeline has really worked well. In fact, we have saved so much money on recruitment fees by not recruiting externally but by developing these younger people internally and giving them the opportunities probably they wouldn't have had previously. Great and Darren give us an idea of what's involved in your apprenticeships. So um, for us at London Ambulance Service we actually are involved in the delivery of our major um, apprenticeship program which is our associate ambulance practitioner that's a level four program um, we recruit people um, they don't necessarily have to have any experience um, for the first initial part they're in the classroom um, they're learning um, kind of the basics if you like um, of working for us they go out and they learn the driving skills um, and then they are out um, with the uh, with the uh, qualified paramedics and, and other staff where they're actually um, in the ambulances and dealing with um, emergencies um, throughout London. And Anita, being in the top 20 means you must be one of the great employers that we have. Um, so, have apprenticeships helped you retain great staff? Yes, they have actually, because we've not only um, recruited apprentices, but we've also looked at our existing workforce and given them opportunities to take up apprenticeships as well. So, we have about 80 people within um, the shop floor and I'd say 80% of those now are actually on an apprenticeship programme, but also we're, we're giving our, uh, other staff the opportunity to undertake and look at level four, level five and degree apprenticeships. So the opportunities have increased. We've got team leaders that are, are now working on level four qualifications. Uh, previously, you know, they didn't have uh, any qualifications. So. It, it's been it's been absolutely fantastic and it's great to see them all growing and developing oh amazing that's anita lander i'm from lander automotive and darren from london ambulance service thank you so much for talking to me thank you thank you now before we find out which employers have made this year's top 10 and who's at number one shanice has been speaking to apprentices to find out what it's like working for a top 100 employer 
I'm joined by Isra, Heather and Tom, a panel of apprentices ranging from all different levels and all different experiences. Heather, you're in your last year of a level four apprenticeship with Network Rail. Why did you decide to choose an apprenticeship over university? So I didn't actually um, choose an apprenticeship to begin with. I did actually go to university to study psychology um, and it just didn't suit me. So I left university and started um, working uh, in different jobs and I found that I preferred working much more but I still wanted that opportunity to study um, and I like working and obviously bringing in money and that kind of thing so um, I was looking at career opportunities and I saw um, that Network Rail was offering apprenticeships and that seemed like a great opportunity to study, learn um, and work at the same time so I chose that. Mm -hmm. And Tom, I want to bring you in now because you're halfway through your level six uh, network degree apprenticeship and you're with BT. You've been there for two years. Why did you choose to do an apprenticeship? Um, well, when I was first introduced to degree apprenticeships, uh, to be honest, I thought it was all too good be to be true. And this this person was trying to explain to me, you know, this is what a degree apprenticeship is. You can, you know, in my case with BT, I had the, my scheme that I applied for, I could have four years worth of work experience, uh, four years uh, being paid a, a degree, and I wouldn't have had to pay a penny for the degree and have no student debt whatsoever. And I thought, to be honest, this is too good to be true. There must be a catch. Um, obviously, after doing a bit of research, I found that that wasn't the case. Um, um, and um, applied for my role at BT, um, but it was just the perfect blend of being able to take what I was learning at university and really introduce it and kind of, uh, you know, put it into into real work in the workplace. And, and that was just absolutely, you know, really appealed to me at the age of 18 coming out of sixth form. So why did you choose BT? Good question. Um, I absolutely loved uh, BT. Uh, the reason being is I knew and I applied for lots of different apprenticeships, but you know when you when you get to the assessment centre, when you actually meet people and you actually talk to them about the the, the business, about the schemes that that, uh, that are coming. And, and BT is a company that connects people from all across the country. Uh, and having messed around with kind of technology and networks at home, uh, it was something that was incredibly uh, interesting to me and actually being able to have the opportunity to connect people uh, from across the UK. Um, so yeah, that's why I chose BT. Mm -hmm. And you're all uh, studying at the same time as working. So Isra, how have you found like the work-life study balance? Um, it hasn't been too difficult for me um, because the way my uh, degree apprenticeship is structured is that we study during term time and then we'll work outside of term time. So we'll have summer placements or the placement year that I'm doing currently. So PwC have done that on purpose just so that we can um, concentrate on our studies during term time and then of course concentrate on work separately as well. Uh, so for me it's been, a, it's been a really great experience because I haven't had to try and balance the two things. Mm -hmm. And you're doing a level six technology degree apprenticeship at PwC. So what's it like doing a degree apprenticeship compared to, let's say, like, I don't know, a, a level four apprenticeship? Um, so at the same time as working and gaining experience, you also get a degree, um, which kind of suited me because I was planning on going to university um, and being able to go to university, but also get that work experience at the same time and get paid and get a fully funded degree is, is just amazing. It's There's really nothing to lose, to be honest. Um, a lot of people do prefer just working, but for people who do want to study as well, it's, it's a really great experience. And Heather, you're actually doing a level four apprenticeship. So what's the differences for you? Um, for me, the, the level four is like doing the first year of um, a, a degree at a uni. Um, the, the best thing for me is that we do the, the university part, um, which is our HTC um, as block release. So there's eight modules and we've done those in top two week modules. Um, and then we go away and do the apprentice, uh, the assignments. The best thing about that is that when we're doing those assignments, if you're struggling, you can just go into any one of the business and just say, I really don't understand this. Please help me. And because um, the qualification we're doing is railway based, we've got such a, a knowledge and skill that we can just tap into at any time. Um, I didn't have that opportunity or resource at university. And, and this is something that's, that's just really great. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely different to how a degree works, but it's, it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. And some schemes at Network Rail also have a dedicated residential training centre. So what's that for them? What's that like? 
So our level threes have the amazing opportunity to go to our Westward um, building, which they spend um, the first part of their scheme um, of residential there. So it still gives them that opportunity like university to go away um, and, and stay away and learn. But it also means that that, that everything is catered for, so food and all those kind of things and accommodation. But they also have the opportunity to go on like a fake track that they've set up and mess with signals and, and get a real hands on um, experience with things that you wouldn't get um, or have the opportunity with in, in normal sort of um, universities. And I guess really that's kind of what an apprenticeship gives you anyway, like a lot of interactive hands on work experience. Um, obviously, we've been in a pandemic um, for the last, like, say, like almost a year now. Uh, with coronavirus, would you say there's been some new challenges that you've been facing in the last, let's say, six months, Tom? Um, yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. I, I think particularly in the in the technology space, you know, today this is happening virtually. Um, we've got um, so many of us keeping in touch with friends and family from across the country uh, virtually rather than maybe kind of popping around to their house or to see them in, in person. And, um, you know, BT has been a key part of that, obviously, as, as all telecommunications providers have been. And, and we've had to kind of bolster up the network and put more in. And that's come with opportunities for, for me in my space of the business. I've been able to deputise and step in for my manager in her leave and also leave my own project to um, help again kind of bulk up the network so we can cope um, and being able to do that at the same time as being an apprentice and actually you know the company gives us real work which is which is absolutely amazing. And Isra how has your apprenticeship changed in the last let's say six months or have you had any other challenges and how have you kind of overcome those challenges? Um, so obviously because of COVID everything is virtual um, so I started my placement about a month ago and it's been kind of difficult um, because everything is remote so I haven't been able to meet my team or my colleagues in person um, but it does allow for some benefits such as um, decreasing time to commute of course um, and with PwC a lot of their teams will be spread out over the country but often they will kind of all um, congregate in London uh, for specific projects but because everything is virtual um, more people from across the country can work together uh, without that travel time involved um, which really increases productivity and allows us to get more work done in less time as well. Where are you hoping to go after your apprenticeship? Are you planning to stay at PwC or move on? Um, it's definitely a consideration um, because the scheme that I'm doing offers a job if you get a 2-1 or above at the end of your degree um, and I'd really like the opportunity to kind of explore the other lines of services and teams within PwC because it's such a vast company there's so many different opportunities they do all kinds of work um, and it would be a great experience to kind of um, dip in and out of all of those teams and kind of gain all of that experience in one after I graduate as well. Heather, are you planning to stay at Network Rail or are you going to be moving elsewhere? No, I, I absolutely plan on staying with Network Rail. Um, it's offered such a fantastic opportunity. Um, and the great thing about the, the sort of rail industry and Network Rail is it offers you sort of a career for life if you want it. Um, it's such a great company that, yeah, I absolutely plan on um, staying as, as long as they will have me. <laughs> Tom, are you planning on staying at BT? Is that a job for life? Um, well, really off the back of what Heather said, yes, if they'll have me, um, it, I, I thoroughly enjoy enjoy what I do. Um, you know, telecommunications is something that I hadn't been involved in before and something now that I find incredibly interesting. Um, and I've been well supported and I hope that that will continue. And, and yeah, I, I really enjoy what I do. So there we have it then, some first hand experiences from the apprentices, Isra, Thomas and Heather, who are all working on apprenticeships at different levels, ranging from four to six. Well, thank you, Shanice. It's great to hear firsthand what a flying start apprenticeships can give school leavers. So this is the moment of truth where we found out which employers are at the very top of this year's rankings. We're into the new top 10 with the Royal Air Force at number 10. It's a very significant apprenticeship employer with over 3,600 apprentices and a total of 23 different apprenticeship programmes from air operations, logistics, engineering and technical to the RAF police, medical support and personnel. There are just two hospitality employers featured in the new top 100. At number 9 is Green King, the pub company and brewer that runs over 2,700 pubs, restaurants and hotels across the UK and employs more than 2,000 apprentices, providing a pathway from front of house and kitchen roles to supervisory and management roles. One place ahead, rivals Mitchells and Butlers are at number 8. 
It operates 1,700 pubs and restaurants and more than 2,000 of its 40,000 strong workforce are apprentices on its bar and waiting apprenticeships, chef apprenticeships and its hospitality management development apprenticeship. Warrington based Optionist Group is the first of two accounting and professional services firms in the top 10. It provides accountancy, tax and employment solutions to contractors and small businesses and a quarter of the firm's 550 staff at its nine offices across England are now apprentices. One place ahead, Mazars is this year's highest ranked professional services firm. One in six of its staff are apprentices and its school leaver programme offers apprenticeships in audit, tax or accounting, typically taking four or five years to reach the professional qualification. We're into the top five with MTR Elizabeth Line. It's the rail operator providing services on Crossrail, the new railway that will link Reading in the west with Abbey Wood and Shenfield in the east via a new tunnel through central London. A fifth of its 1,100 employees are apprentices and all of its new customer experience staff and trainee train drivers are given the opportunity to enrol on an apprenticeship programme. At number four, we have one of the best known names in telecoms and technology and a very substantial apprenticeship employer. BT employs over 4,000 apprentices across the company with programmes in business management, customer service, cyber security, digital, finance, HR, learning and development, engineering, sales and marketing and telecoms. So, we have just three employers remaining. At number three, it's the second of the armed forces to be ranked in this year's top ten. Congratulations to the Royal Navy. It has almost 3,800 apprentices and offers over 20 different apprenticeship programmes. New recruits joining the Royal Navy as ratings are automatically enrolled onto Level 2 apprenticeships and an accelerated scheme is available for engineering apprentices. And at number two, we have one of the largest government departments with almost 50,000 staff in England and a name that every business and household in the country is likely to be familiar with. It's a well done to HM Revenue and Customs. It employs more than 4,600 apprentices across the organisation with opportunities available from level three up to level seven for new recruits and existing employees. Which means we've arrived at the very top of this year's rankings. The number one employer in the National Apprenticeship Services top 100 apprenticeship employers for 2020 is the British Army. Many congratulations to them for their huge commitment to employing apprentices and for providing so many apprenticeship opportunities right across the British Army. So we've done it. We've counted down all of the country's top apprenticeship employers for 2020. Martin is with the number one employer, the British Army. Over to you, Martin. Thanks very much, Shanice. Well, I'm absolutely delighted we're joined by Colonel Kate George. Uh, she's the Assistant Head of Learning and Development at the British Army. And let me just start by saying many congratulations. Uh, the first number one uh, in the top 100 uh, apprenticeship employers. Now, I didn't explain in the voiceover, but um, the, the reason you're number one is over 14,000 apprentices uh, across the Army and over 8,000 uh, new starts last year. So just talk us through um, how you go about apprenticeships on such a huge scale. Yeah, absolutely, Martin, and, and thank you. So um, for, for us, all of our new recruits uh, will complete basic military training, and then they start the training that is specific to the trade that they have chosen to, to join. Um, and that's when we enrol them onto their apprenticeship program, and they will complete the apprenticeship alongside com uh, continuing to develop their military skills. And, and for us, because we deliver that in our own training establishments, uh, it really enables us to be able to contextualise the, the apprenticeship and use military-based scenarios uh, that are really relevant to, to the apprentice and to the soldier's trade. So it doesn't really matter which direction soldiers are going to go, there is an apprenticeship waiting for them somewhere um, for, for whichever specialism they're choosing. Absolutely. So, so we've committed to uh, delivering and offering an apprenticeship to all of our new recruits if there is a, a national apprenticeship standard available. Yeah. Now, how does that all help with recruitment? Because I know at times it can be a, a tough sell. You're, you're not just selling a job, you're selling a, whole, uh, selling a whole way of life for those who are joining the army. Does it help that there's a recognised qualification that perhaps people can use in civilian life later on? Yeah, definitely. So I think what apprenticeships um, have helped us be able to do is explain to the potential recruits 
uh, to their parents and career advisors, at the skills that our soldiers gain in, in the first few years of their army career. Um, and for, for us and for our soldiers, that's just the start of their professional development and they can go on to higher level qualifications later on. And it also looks like you have some very good completion rates, very good progression rates. Um, do people have the opportunity to move on to perhaps a, a higher level apprenticeship in, in future years or, or other training opportunities? So within the apprenticeship field, definitely, we recently introduced a Chartered Manager degree apprenticeship. So that is offered to our, our senior soldiers and warrant officers when they move into roles where they are in leadership and management positions. Um, and we deliver apprenticeships uh, across sort of level two, three, four, um, and provide those opportunities throughout a soldier's career. And just give me an idea of some of the resources you've got to, to actually make all of this happen, because these are spectacular numbers, 14,000 plus uh, and 8,000 starting each year. How on earth do you resource all of that? So we're, we're an employer provider, um, but we're also very lucky that we have the support of um, training providers who uh, deliver elements of the apprenticeship for us. Uh, but I think for us a, a really key thing is the fact that we have delivered apprenticeships for, for so many years that a number of our soldiers have completed an apprenticeship themselves. Um, so they are there to, to be a mentor for those soldiers going through an apprenticeship at the moment. And I'm guessing you've got lots of good, uh, good sort of case studies as well of those who've been through the army and gone on to civilian life and are using their apprenticeships to good effect there. Definitely. So, uh, as I said before, it's about being able to uh, demonstrate to future employers what skills, what knowledge and experience um, an individual has gained during their time. An apprenticeship or any other form of civilian qualification really helps translate that into a language that potential future em employers really understand. Well, it's a hugely, hugely impressive um, achievement. Many congratulations on being the number one in the top 100 uh, apprenticeship uh, employers for 2020. Uh, Colonel Kate George from the British Army, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Martin, and what an exciting afternoon it's been, and well done to the British Army for scooping the top spot in the new rankings. 14,000 is an amazing number of apprentices for one organisation to provide. Well, we're almost at the end of the programme, but there's just time for some more of your messages, Shanice. Shout out to Amazing Apprenticeship who have been posting on at Apprenticeship Twitter. Keep your posts coming and don't forget to use the hashtag top 100 app M. At LCHS um, Learning have said a fantastic programme so far. They're pleased to tune in virtually and hear the amazing work going on around apprenticeships. Well, thank you for the comment. And hello to the east of England, AAN watching along and Anthony Knowles following the broadcast and sharing in the employer success so far. Um, at Sasha MM3 is feeling very proud to be part of apprenticeships and we're happy to hear it too, Sasha. Degree apprenticeships at Manchester Met are supporting over on Twitter and are glad to see some of their partners being recognised. Um, and a message uh, from Claire Paul at the BBC, so your boss, uh, Shanice, she simply says bravo, so I think that's gone down well. So that's it. Uh, many congratulations to all the employers that have been ranked in the top 100 apprenticeship employers for 2020. There'll be a full list of the new rankings available to download from the top 100 website later on this afternoon. And if you've registered for this broadcast, you'll receive a copy of the list by email too. All the top 100 employers will be shortly receiving a digital marketing pack to use with downloadable assets that can be used across digital platforms, including social media and your websites. All that remains is for us to thank you for watching today. We hope you've enjoyed today's programme. I'm Shanice Evans. And I'm Martin Birchall. And on behalf of the National Apprenticeship Service, it's goodbye. Mm -hmm.